Okay, so arrays, right? That's what we're going to learn today. An arrays is the type of data structure, of data type that we can use in JavaScript that probably has the most uses, right? Because every time we process data, we process sets of data, right? So you're process, processing transactions. That's a set of data. And that set of data is essentially an array of transactions, a list of transactions. You can call it, uh, it's actually in, in different programming languages, have different names. List is the name in older programming languages. Array is the name that we give it in JavaScript, OK? But you can find it as list, set, um, arrays, etc. Now, in JavaScript, arrays are created using uh, the notation that we discussed before, the square brackets. And all the elements of the array, if the array already has elements, we can add it in, inside. So, hello world. In this case, we have an array with two elements, because we can see that it's only two elements there. The two elements are strings. Again, arrays are not limited what, what type of data they can contain. There is no way in JavaScript to limit an array to only have numbers, or only have strings, or only have booleans, right? An array can have any combination of data types. It can even have other arrays, or objects. That's usually the common way we use it, right? But again, see in this example, we have an array with two elements. In previous class, we learned how to access an element inside that array based on the position, right? So remember, the positions are an, a number that indicates what position in that array we want to capture. We want to get the value. And the way we do that is with the, the index notation. So we put the, vari the variable name. Say we have this array. I will put it. <coughs> and I will access the, the value at index 0. 0 being the first element, the first position. Right? So when I do this, what I'm getting is essentially a low. All right? Now, we can access that value, let's say, to print it in the terminal. We can access that value to store it in a variable, in another variable, right? So right now, this variable b will be equal to hello. Now, what if I want to modify the value in the array? Right? To do that, we simply put the array at, with the index in the left side of the assignment operation. Right? So we put this, we say, <coughs> right? So now we modify the array. So in that position, position zero, position zero, we will have the word hola. Okay? So we can modify and we can access the values of the array using that index notation. Questions? No questions? OK. Now, one, one problem that this index notation have is that remember what happens when we try to access an index outside of the limits of the array. Right? What happens when we have an array like this, exactly, on the fine. So an array with two elements, and we try to access the index at 10. Let's say index at 5. And we want to console log this. So what will be, what will be shown in the screen, in the terminal, with this? Undefined. undefined. So this will return undefined. Right? Because there is nothing in that position. Undefined is the value for that. Means an absence of, of a value. Now, what happens if we do this? If we try to assign
we try to assign an index position outside of the limits of the array, what do you think it will happen? Well, I mean, intuitively, what do you think it will? We will be assigning, no, no, it will be assigned. The problem is the elements between those two, right? Because we have an uh, hello or hola at zero, we have word at one, and then we have nothing at two, we have nothing at three, we have nothing at four, and then at five we will have here. How do how are the, the, you're defining this, this space? So the array basically will look like this. Hola, oh, word. It will be undefined. So it will be a bunch of undefined between the between the element that we want and the element that we sh the, the element that the array had before and the element that we just added at that position. <coughs> Oops. So we he so zero, one, two, three, four, and then at five we will have here. Right? Now, this is not a good way to modify the elements of the array because we want to always, when we are adding elements to the array, we want to add elements after the last element, not at any random position that might be five like here, but might be a million. And what happens that we have a million positions basically empty in memory, right? That, that would be a problem. So. For that, array have a lot of functions that we will learn how to use today. And the first function that we're going to use today is the function push. You see this dot here, this dot notation? That means that I want to access one of the properties or functions of this array. So arrays, you can think about arrays like an entity that has properties and functions. We actually saw one of these properties last week to learn to get the length of the array. What was the property name? Length. Length, dot length. So with this property, we can get the length of the array. Okay? Actually, in this array, right now, this length will be six. Right? Because we just added an element at yeah. position five. That means that my array now has six elements. Hello, word, undefined, 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 here. Make sense? So now my array has six elements. So what I'm saying is that the array have properties and functions that I can use to modify it, to extract information about the array, or to basically do some other operations on the array. And we will learn some of these functions today. Okay, the first one that we learned last week was actually length. It's one of the properties, and it gives us the length of the array. Now, we're going, about, we're going to learn about push. So push is a function, right? Push is a function where you can add elements to the array. And you always will add them at the end of the array. So if the right way to do this here would be to do push here instead of doing array by here. And then my array will look like this. Because it adds to the end of the array. That's what push does, right? So push adds an element to the end of the array. Whatever element do you, uh, you want, right? Push, if you pass a string, it will add that string so whatever expression, well, by the way, let me put a semicolon here. Whatever expression you put here, that expression will be evaluated, calculated, and then the value will be added to the array. So if I do this, sorry, what? Yeah, delete, delete the, the undefined and push the here. It doesn't delete anything. It just pushes, like, think of, uh, let's say my array is starts with, only two values, right? Hola and word. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't think about the other example. So if I have an array with this, like this, the length will be two, right? Yeah. 
And when I do push, it will have three elements, and the last element will be that new value that I just pushed. Now, what happens if I do another push? Let's say array push 45 times 2. What will happen here? Hola, world here tonight. It will be hola world here and night. Uh, 90, yeah? That's, that will be the new array. So every time, what I'm trying to say is that that parameter of the push function is an expression that will be calculated and whatever resulting value will be added. You can add a variable. Let's say you have the, vari the variable b. Whatever, the, whatever is the value of b, that value will be added to the array. It's not adding b, it's adding the value of b, right? So whatever expression you put there will be calculated, evaluated, essentially. When I say evaluated, it's the same as calculated, right? But evaluated is the right word. So the expression gets evaluated, and the resulting value gets added to the array. OK? That's what push does. Questions about push? Are good? Great. So the same way we are pushing elements of the array, we need to extract elements of the array, right? There, is, there should be a certain way to do that. And this actually is, and that's the pop function. Now, the pop function, remember, push, pop, right? Push, push the element from the, from the, from the, from the end, and pop removes the element from the end as well, correct? And returns the value. So whatever value was at the end of the, of the array, I can get it with pop. If I don't need it, right? Mm -hmm. If I don't need it, I can just do array pop and just throw it away. I mean, I don't need to store it in a variable, right? I can just do array pop. And that will remove the last element of the array. But if I need to capture that last element of the array, I can store it in a variable. <coughs> the array will, get, will be modified. So now the array will have one less element, and that element will be in that variable. But if I don't need to get the, the, the value, I can just do array pop, right? So remember, push and pop add element from the, at the end, and then remove an element from the end. Questions about push and pop? Yes? Not push and pop, but I think you're going to go into, like, let's say if I want to get, remove the wall, wall out of the array. So uh, the last character. Uh, yeah, yeah, there is a function for that. And this is actually one of the most, one of the, one of the, w the functions that people try to avoid because it's really hard to use, or to really t hard to identify where you have to slice. That's the name of the function. But yeah, we will get there. Uh, another question? Yes? All right. You're saying that push and pop add? Yes. The last? After, at the end of the array. At the end of the array. At the end of the array and starts from the end of the array. OK, right now we're adding, right? Yeah, pushing to add and popping to remove. Now, that's from the end. What if I want to add to the beginning? of the array. There is another two functions for that, and those are shift to add to the beginning and unshift. Now, the reason these four functions exist, notice that you can add from the add to the end, add to the beginning. With, so you can do push to add to the end. You can do shift to add to the beginning. And then you can do pop to remove from the end. And, and you can do on shift to remove from the beginning. Right. So there are four functions to basically add elements to the array at the beginning or at the end. And you can have two functions to remove from the end or the beginning of the, of the array. Yes? Yes. 
can multiple like like you have first right there, but can you put a comma? Uh, not sure that you can do that, but I will ask you to Google the reference, the documentation, the official reference, and tell me that if that's possible. Mm. So you can go to MDN and check it out. The way you do it is MDN array push. Let's see what, what it says. Interesting. It does. Allow you to put more than one. Imagine use cases where we need to. Yeah, yeah. The elements to add to the end of the array. Actually, you can add more than one. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you don't, if, if you are not sure about how the function works, you just Google the official documentation, and there, you, there you have it. Right. Great. Now, the reason we have these four functions is because in an array, you can think about an array, like. Um, like for example, um, there are certain things that happens in, in real life that work in a different way depending on how you manage, right? Let's say, let's say you have an order stack, right? Let's say you have a stack of orders and you're basically taking from the top of the stack and doing the job and then you're discarding that, that task. But then eventually someone will came and put another order on the top of the stack, right? And then another, and you're taking from the, from the top. So that's what in computer science is called a stack. Because it works under the principle that when you use push and pop, those are the stack functions, the last one that is added is the first one that comes out, right? First in, first out. Uh, last in, first out, right? That's a data structure like you can see in real life. Like you have a stack of chores that you have to do and you take, you're taking from the top, that's a stack. Now you have a, if you have a queue, like if you go to I know, a bakery and you're in a queue to order, that's a, that's a queue actually. That's the name of the, of, the, of the structure. In a queue, you add, from the, you add to the end and you take from the beginning, right? That's first in, first out. So those people, yeah, people, default. Um, you probably heard this concept before. Yeah. So these are the four functions that allow you to implement those type of behaviors. Correct? Um, questions before I move to the next function? Yes? Yeah, the very first one, which I think is over to the left, where it says it has two the plus or minus. Push? Yeah, so it's the R. <coughs> so, so R is your, okay, so all you're doing is doing the position, okay, the index position, okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes? Shift, yes. Shift, right. And then our shift. Take from the beginning. But you can store it as well. You can. It deletes it. It deletes it, and you can get it. If you want to know what's the first element there without deleting it, how do you do? Control I mean, what if you want to just, tell me the expression. So I have this array. Let's say I have this array, right? And I want to see the first element of the array. Uh -huh. Zero. Zero, exactly. <laughs> There's nothing to do there. It's just give me the first position. I want just to see it. I don't want to modify it, right? I want to see it. Array at zero. You want to see the last element of the array. Array bracket. Um, array dot length minus one. Minus one. Why minus one? Because uh, it's, it start count counting from zero. Exactly. And uh, the last one is out of range. It's out of range, exactly. Oh, actually, my word here is incorrect, and that usually happens when you speak Spanish and you try to teach in English. <laughs> <laughs> so length is TH, not HT. Sorry. I probably, you probably hit this bump again, uh, too. OK, so if I want to get the first, I'm doing array at 0. That's the first element of the array, right? Indexes in an array start at 0. That's the first position. So if I want to look at that element, array at zero. If I want to look at the second element, array at one. That's pretty. Now if I want to look at the last element, that will be array dot length. So the length of the array minus one, because I know the length, there is nothing at that position. It's one position earlier, because 
and raise the status zero, right? They are shifted one position to the left. By the way, this, there is a say in computer science that off by one errors, when I say off by one errors, it's like when you try to access an element of the array and you are off by one, a pretty common. Because arrays are starts at zero, but sometimes people don't remember this and they just put, oh, I want the last element of the array, array dot length is minus one. So off by one errors are pretty common in computer in programming. Right? So you have to be aware of that. Or take care of that. Now questions before I move on to the next functions. Okay, so that's like great if you want to kind of store it somewhere, but right? Like if you want to say to output it to show you the value, you have to do console log. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is just an expression, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So you go console log and then Yeah, or you store it in a variable. is actually a second. Yeah. So notice that now I have expressions, uh, instructions. Right. Instruction, instruction. Before there was just expression that would. That exactly. Cool. Questions? Great. So let's see what else we have. OK. Now, there are a lot of, there are a lot of functions in arrays that we can use. And actually, a lot of them. You can find them all in the documentation. And you can see them on the left, right? So all the array functions are there. A lot of them. You see push is here, reduce, reverse, shift. What is on shift? On shift is over here. Now, we are not going to learn them all today. We're just going to learn some of them and some of the ones that are really important to, know, to us, right? Now, the other thing that we need to learn today is how to iterate on an array. So iterate on arrays, right? So what iterate on array means? Remember, our first class of programming is programming's purpose is to, you got data, you do some computations, some transformations, and then you have an output, a result. The same way you have a function, right? In a function, you have parameters. You have some code that do some computations on those parameters. And then you have the return function to return the result, right? Now, iterate on arrays is essentially for an array of data that you have. You want to, you have to, you want to do some computation on some checking or some validation or whatever thing you want to do with every element of the array, right? And that process of doing some computation on every element of the array means you are iterating on the array and then performing some operations on it, right? But you need to be able to check every element of the array. And that process is called iterate, OK? Now, there is a lot of ways to iterate in an array. We will find, we will use some of the most common ones, right? And the most common one is to use the for instruction. So there is a for instruction in JavaScript that allows us to iterate on arrays. For instruction, it uses the reserve word for. I would say there are a lot of variants of this. Now, the one that we're going to use today <coughs> is this variant. So we have an array. Let's say we have this array, let's say, of names. OK. Let me put a semicolon at the end. Now, I want to iterate on that array. And for every element of the array, I want to console log in the screen, in the terminal, the value and the length of the array, of the string, sorry. So for every element, we have John, Mary, Donald, and Doc. I will print the name, so the, 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 the actual value, let's say John. And next to it, I will print how many, how long is, the, is that name, right? the length of the, of the. But for that, I need to go through all the elements of the array. That's what we call iterate, correct? Right? Now, let's try to do it. 
So one of the versions, remember, four has a lot of versions. I was playing two of them, probably three. The first version is this. We create, we do let i in It's a push, yeah. Well, it's a for, yeah, kind of. There's another variant. So notice here that I say for, and I put let i. Let is the reserve word to create a variable. Uh, i. Actually, I'm, no, I'm not sure that we can use cons. Probably not, but we can try it later. It changed, right? It changed, but it's declared every time. So probably oh. it's not that it changes. So it's always cons. That's why I don't remember if you can use cons here, but you can try it by yourself. Now, we're creating a variable. The name of the variable is i. I will call it index. Let's call it index or position, <coughs> whatever. So we are using, we're creating a variable that will have all the values between 0 and the last position of the index, right? So this position variable, it could be position, it could be index. It's pretty common to use i or j or k. But you will see this variance usually in code. I being the most common because it's super short and super simple and it meets index, right? That's why app is i. But let's say we have the variable name index. In is a reserved word. Arrays are our array. Now with this expression inside this curly bracket, the variable index will get all the values from 0 Two, zero, one, two, three, two, three. And every time will be a different value. Zero, one, two, three. That means that if I want to get the value at that position, the first thing I do is create a variable and I say, give me the value at index. Okay? So now I have a variable value that will have the values of John, Mary, Donald, and Doc. And I can do whatever I want with that value, variable. I can console log value, and that will essentially print it on the screen. But what if I want to print the lens value dot length? By the way, strings also have properties that you can use, and dot length is the same property as in array. So when you have a string, like, for example, welcome, and you do dot length, that will give you the length of the word welcome, how many characters are in that word. So length is common for arrays and strings, right? That, that I just wanted to say so you don't get confused with an array. So uh, the length property you can be applied to arrays, and it can also be ap applied to strings. Now, with this in place, this essentially will print in the screen. Oops, what it will print? It will print John, four. Mary, four. Dono, that's six. Doc, four. And it will end the array, the, uh, end the loop, sorry. So a for, a for loop, this is what we call a for loop, is looping to the array. It's taking every element of the array, right? This is pretty much the most common way to loop into the array. We will find another way in a, in a minute, but this way I get the index and I get, and I can, from the index I can get the value. I get both, both properties, right? Index and value. The alternative is this. Oops. The alternative is this for let value in ar of array, sorry. Of array. Now, you see the difference between these two? They will both print the same, by the way. They will both print 
this uh, <coughs> is there any performance difference between no necess no no necessarily but there is a big difference between them yes Yeah, yeah, I, I will repeat it, yeah. yes. So index is a variable. Make sense? Yeah. I'm using index, but uh, Mike might be. Let's do pos, position. Could be anything. But that variable will have the values 0, 1, 2, 3. If you have an array of, if you have an array of a million elements, it will be from 0 to 9999999. Because that variable will take the values of all the indexes on that array. Okay. Okay. So that's what led, that's the for in. This is the version called for in. Okay. And this version is called for off. Right? So the, in the for in variant, you get the index of every position in the array. In the for off variant, you get all the values in every position in the array. That's the difference between this, those two. From for for getting the index to getting the value, for in for off, you see the difference. They both they both give you the same result, right? Because I'm still printing the name and then the value. But the the problem is that the one in the right I don't have the index. So if I need to let's say I want to pull this list, and I want to show in this list. Oh come on. I want to show zero, and this is a position one. And this is a position two, and this is a position three. There is no way I can do that here because I don't have a position. I don't know what position this iteration is. I'm just getting the values, right? But I don't have the position. With the variant with four in, I get the index, so I get the position, and with the position I can get the value. And now I have both position and value. Yes. Sorry? Where does the two come from? What? Sorry. The, the, the six oh, that's the value dot length. You see here, I'm printing value. The value the, the number of that's the word, right? Oh. And value dot length is the length of that string. That, that so yeah. basically, uh, the one with in, uh, it iterates through the index, and this one iterates through, through, through the, the values. values. Yes to the values. So are you saying you're going to get a result that's a 0 dash John 4 or? Oh, no, no. If I made the change, I need to make a change here. Sorry. Uh, pause, comma. Okay. If I do this change, that's what it's going to look like. That's going to look like, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't add the, I didn't modify the console log to represent that. But yeah, in this version, in the for in, I have the index, so with the index I can get the value, and I can print index, value, and then the length of the value. But in the for off, I don't have the index, I only have the value. So I can print the value and the length of the value. That's all. And professor, it's just the way the, the syntax is set up, right? Because we have John, right? well, I'm looking at it, and I'm trying to position. POS is basically, you're just creating another value variable for R. Yeah, but to, to iterate through the array, I guess. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, yeah, to iterate over the array. But notice that the difference between these two is this little word over here. Right, but that's what I'm saying. We already have a variable R for John, Mary, Donald, yes. and Doug. Why can't it be for R and then that's it? Why, why, why are we creating another variable to go that to variable, the variable? That's a. What I'm saying, like yeah, that. yeah. No, good question. Good question. This is a temporal value, uh -huh. a temporal variable. And this is temporarily taking all the values in that array, mm -hmm. one by one, individually. So pause is a variable mm -hmm. that will take different values. Every time this loop executes, it will have a different value. So the first time will be 0. The second time will be 1. The, sec the third time will be three, 2, and so on and so forth, until the array ends. Yeah, it's, 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 it's more like a pointer. 
like po it's pointing to the uh, first element, then iterates again and pointing to the right, second one. Thing. It's just a procedure. It's a simple yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just all of it's just this is the way we set this up. This yeah, yeah, yeah. Go That's the way it works. The yeah, porting. It's the way it works. It's the way it works. <laughs> Exactly. Because the thing is that I think the, I think I, I understand the, the issue is that right now we have four. <laughs> I think I understand. You have four. You see in the array, and the array has four elements, right? Yeah, but right. what happens if I don't know? Let, no, let's do this. <laughs> array and let's do fetch. So now this array comes from a backend that's halfway halfway around the world, and I don't know how many er elements in that array will come up. Now you need to iterate through all of the array. It could be one, it could be zero, and it could be a million. I don't know how many of them. But I know that this loop will give me all the positions in that array. If the, if the array has, let's say the array has zero elements. No, uh, no elements in the array, right? That will still work. It will nothing will be printed, right? Because this never will be never will be executed because it doesn't have elements. So position doesn't have a value. There is not even a zero position. So it will just keep the the for loop complete. Same here. But if I have one element at least, then I will iterate into into that element. But it could be zero, it could be one, or it could be a million <laughs> again. So you don't know. That's why we create a loop to iterate through the whole array. Right? It's not a it's not a constant array, it's not a static array, it's just dynamic. So whatever value of the array, how many values the array have, we will iterate through all the, all of them. Got it? Make sense? Now I think that, that will answer your question a little bit. Great. So questions, questions. I, I like this uh, interaction. <laughs> Keep, 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 uh, keep making questions, that's, that's a good thing. Great, let me separate this a little bit more. So these are two of the most common ways to iterate through arrays because, again, it's pretty straightforward. I would suggest that you master this one. So when you want to iterate through an array, this is a little bit more um, Versatile, right? Because I will have the position, and with the position, I can get the value. And there is no big difference between those two. Now, there are other ways that we can iterate through arrays using four. But the other version of four is really messy. Let me explain how. You will see it. Let i equal zero, i less than array the length i plus one one and then I can do whatever I want here. You see that this version of for loops, this is the this is the version that the author of JavaScript took from C, the language. And from Java, because Java basically took it from C as well, right? <laughs> so all of them got it from the same source. So that C language have this this notation for creating for loops. C sharp as well. Yeah, they all they all got the same the from the same place. Now the issue here is that it's very it's very easy to get it wrong, I would say. Right? Because you have three sections here. So you have an initialization section, you have to create a variable. You have a condition section, you have to tell how many elements you want you want. And then you have an increment section. Of course, this is the most versatile because you can say, oh, only I only want half of the array, right? So you can do array dot len half two divided by two. So you will only get that half, or you can, or you only want the second half. You can do that as well, right? It's, it's a, a little bit more versatile. Or you can say, you know what? I want one every other element of the array. I don't want all the elements of the array. You can also do that, right? But this is not common. So why even go there and use it? I would recommend that you look it up, how do you create for loops 
in JavaScript. This is the syntax, essentially. So for example, here you can say, okay, I want an array, but I want to loop through all the elements, all the numbers from zero to nine, including the nine. That, that would be the way to do it. And you can just console load them. And this will print zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Excuse me, but yes. So when, you, when you're referring to me as a loop, they're not necessarily like, when I think of loops, I think of like always one to them. Yeah, but they are limited. It's not inf infinite loops. Not infinite. Yeah, okay. actually we want to avoid that. Okay. Infinite loops. When you're coding, most companies have coding guidelines are automatic. If you try to do this type of loop, and this is a valid JavaScript code, by the way. <laughs> that will be a complaint in the in the in the checker that says, "Don't use an infinite loop because this is an infinite loop, right? Whatever is running inside, it will run forever as long as the computer is on. That's not good." Sorry. While true, that means that. It's true. True, is, true will be true forever, right? Yeah. So whatever is inside that, it will run forever. And you don't want that. Usually, if you do this in a, <laughs> try to do this, try, try to put console log, like something, and run it in, the, in your application in JavaScript and <laughs> see what happens. You're, I'm not sure that because browsers are now, have better protection for this, but all browsers, if you put this, huh? it will crash, yeah. It will crash because it's basically running indefinitely there. It's not even waiting for anything. It's just running. It's not crash. I mean, all browsers, the crash was like you try to close it and nothing worked. Like nothing in the page worked. So yeah, browsers now are very like are more prepared to this, but uh, nevertheless, you can still hit an infinite loop. So if you try to do this type of for loops, and you don't put like a correct condition, you might hit an infinite loop there, right? But there is no infinite loops with these versions. Yeah. They will run through the whole array and stop, because it's finished. It's, uh, exactly. Once it gets to the last element, it will move to the next thing. Yeah, questions, 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 questions. OK, this is a, for, this is a traditional for loop from JavaScript. To be honest, it's pretty uncommon to see it in real life. Like you never see for loops like this. Never. It's like not necessary because you don't. First, you don't do loops that are limited, like statically limited. And you always iterate to arrays, and there are better ways to iterate to arrays. And let's see one more. And the other version of iterating to array is a Java is an array function called for each. And notice that I'm writing for each in camel case. So that means the E is it's a capital letter, right? Now, this is a function. And it's a function of array. OK. Let's, let's see how can we explain this. This is really. OK. So this function of an array is the type of function that we call higher order function. Sorry about that. So high order function. High order function means that the parameter for this function is another function. Right? So the parameter for this for each function should be another function. And let me explain how this works. This other function is a function that we don't need to create before. We, it's a function that we can write right there. And we can use function expression or. Anonymous, um, anonymous function? It's an anonymous Ar function. Arrow, arrow function. So you can write it like this function this with curly brackets or you can write it like this with an arrow right now the parameters of this function are always the same for all the functions in arrays all the 
functions that are higher order functions have the same set of parameters. And the parameters are element, index, array. So you have to pass a function that has three parameters, element, index, and array. Now, let me change a little bit the, thing, the, the way I'm writing this so it's easier to understand. Is that easier to see? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm calling a function, so 40 is a function. Notice that I have parentheses here and parentheses here. That means that whatever I'm passing here is inside, so this is the parameter that I'm passing, right? That's why I separated a little bit more. And then the parameter of that for each function is another function. And that function always take these three parameters in that order, element, index, array. Okay, so what they, does that mean? Is that for each will take that function and it will take every element of the array and execute this function with it, right? So if I have my array with the names, let me put it up from, from there. Where are they, where are they, where are they? Oh, I changed it here. Okay, so let me put it back. So John, Mary, Donald, and Doug. Right? Okay. Now. What this for each function is do, it will do is it will take every element of the array, so it will take John, Mary, Donald, and Doc, and it will call this function with those param with those parameters. So if the first time will be element is Mary, the index of Mary is, Zero. and then the array is the whole the whole array. So I can here come here and say okay, console log index, element, and array. I mean, I'm just printing everything off, right, to the console. And this will output zero, Mary, and then the whole array, because I get the whole array in every iteration. So you see that goes a little bit further than the for in and the for each. For in, I get the index. For each, I get the value. But in this version, I get the index, the value, and the whole array. So, it, I'm sorry, it should be, it could, will it be zero, John, and then the whole array? The whole array, yes. Okay. And then you. Oh, right, right, you're correct. Thank you, thank you for that. So, it will be this, and then it will be one, Mary, and the whole array, and then it will be two, Donald, and the whole array, and then it will be three, mm -hmm. Doc, and the whole array. Got it? So this is what we call in JavaScript an anonymous function. Because this function, as you can see, is not assigned to anything. It cannot be reused. It's just reading right there in the parameters. And once it's executed and used, it gets discarded. So it's anonymous. But again, this is the, the, the syntax of the function. Element, so in this element index. It could be any name. Because remember. The only thing that we care is the position. So it could be E, I, and A. Whatever set of variables that you use. We're saying that the first is the element, the second is the index, and the third will be the array. Right? Let me put it back because I think it's clear that. That, that, that for you. Not necessarily, and actually, it would make. S I always thought that this is faster than regular, regular Polish. Let me explain why. You are calling. Let's say. <laughs> let me explain why. It's because I'm not sure that in the standard says that the order of execution is guaranteed, right? Like you don't care, mm -hmm. literally. 
you don't care because you're just saying for each, like the semantic is for each element of the array, run this function. But it doesn't say for each element of the array order by index, run this. Like in a for index, like a for in. For in, you get zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? That's guarantee. But in this version, I feel, this is me, I feel that this just run this function for every element of the array. But the order is not guaranteed. So it could be in any order, right? If it's, if it's in any order, that means that I can take, if it's in a million elements array, I can take 500 elements and send it to a processor, and I can take 500 and send it to another processor, and do the whole thing in parallel in two processors. So it will be faster. Uh, but I mean, if, if each time it's looping, it, it, does it return the full array? No, that's the point. It doesn't return anything. So there is, there is a certain assumption that I'm making here that it can be parallel. So this function is better suited for parallel programming or as parallel as computing. As 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 yeah, just parallel, right? Because I can have, like computers today have multi-core multi processors, right? So a single computer can have eight cores, 64 cores. For each, if you need to process a million elements and you're using a for each and every it's just it's running a function, you can technically send it to 64 different cores. Mm -hmm. I can send a portion, like I can send from zero to a million to this, and then from a million to the second million to the other, and so on and so forth, and the 64 cores are doing the same thing at the same time, right? So it will be faster. Then if I do a four in, and then I have to go <laughs> through earlier, one, one, one. one by one, yeah. Question? So I'm not saying, by the way, I'm not saying that this is the way it works. What I'm saying is that it's better suited for that type of processing. Yeah. Just that. <laughs> yes? For each, you can attend those three variables. So you have to just make sure you put three variables in the beginning. Just no three. Elements, yeah, yeah. The, the order is the important thing. So element will be the first. Yeah. Index will be the second. Like, usually what I do is I put the item and index. I never use IRA array. I don't never, like, I never need it, technically. Or if you only need the the element, just use the first one. Okay. So they are ordered in the in the I would say in the order of importance. So the the element is the first, then the index, and then the array if you need it, right? So most of the time you just need the first and you just use item. Make sense? Now the only thing that I care about this is that you understand that this function takes this. these three elements, these three parameters. Because the thing is that this function is common in a bunch of other functions in arrays, right? And I will put some examples of that right now. Map is one of them, yes. So let's do the first one, let's say map. So map is another of these array functions that takes, by the way, I'm gonna use a Actually, I would do something. So this is map. I'm intentionally making it uh, shorter, like using the syntax of an array function, a uh, far arrow array, a uh, far arrow function. So you can see that this is pretty common in code, right? Actually, let me let me take it a little bit further because. This is common, not, I'm not that far off. So this example, with the same array that we had before, uh, I think I have an array in, in the clipboard, so yeah. Now array map will return a new array. And it will take every element of the previous array, and it will map it using that function. So whatever that function returns, that will be the new element in the new array. So what do you think it will pop up in that new, in that new array variable? What will be new array? It will be four, four, six, four. Six, four, four. Mm -hmm. 
Why? Because again, we are mapping, so the map function will take every element of the array and will pass it through that function. Whatever that function returns, that will be the new element in the new array. And because I'm using length, that means that I will take the, the word, I will calculate the length, and that will be the new element, four, four, six, four. So that's what map does. It converts from one thing to the other. Make sense? So that's what map. And by the way, this is the function, right? Remember arrow functions? So in the arrow function, the first thing is the parameters. But again, if you remember correctly, if you have only one parameter, you don't need the parentheses. That's why I intentionally hit the parentheses. But technically, it should be like this, right? It should be parentheses with the parameters inside, arrow. And then if you don't need, it's just if you, if you only have a return, you can just put the expression right there next to the arrow, and that will still work. So this could be also modified to be like this. So it could be like this, but I intentionally make it made it short. But again, this is the same thing. Make sense? That's what mapping. Let's let's do a different mapping. Let's do item dot len. No, item. Actually, let's do this. To upper case. So, what do you think will be the new array? Uh, the same one. Everything in uppercase. Exactly. It will be the same array with every word in uppercase, because I'm taking every. So, the, what the function is returning is the same element, but in uppercase. By the way, in a string, to uppercase means put it everything in uppercase. So this is what this is the result. Mary, Donald, and Doc. Questions, questions, questions. And I'm there is a bunch of other functions like this. I would not go in so deep into the functions. We want to work in the project. Um, but I wanted to touch map because map is the most important function that we will use later in React, right? Because map is the function that will help us convert from data that we get from the backend to React components. So when you have a list of, I don't know, you have a list of to-dos, right? You're getting a list of to-do from the server, and you want to show them in the screen, in the page. You're converting that list, that is an array of objects or an array of strings, and you're converting that to an array of pieces of HTML. And for that, you use map, because that's the way you convert an array of something to an array of something else, right? So that's why map is so important, and that's why I wanted you to see map. Now, questions before we move on to the project? No? Don't worry about map for now. I mean, I just wanted you to see it, because it's important. Um, there is a bunch of other functions that we will use. We have filter. We have sum. We have every. We have, these are all functions, by the way, array functions. Um, one that we use most of the time includes what else, what else, what else? Filter, sum, every, include, re reduce. It's kind of hard, but again, yeah, it's one of the hardest ones. It's really the only one that is different, but it's, it's nice. Uh, reduce, what else we have? Well, we have the documentation. We can check. Actually, this is a this is a good one. This is a good one. Join. This is a nice one because join. If you have an array of strings, you can join them by a space, and then will be a string separated with that character, right? So join is pretty useful. Which one? Sort. It's a good one too. It orders, is for ordering. Yeah, it's a bunch of them. You can save the documentation, right? Now, the one that you, uh, sorry, what's your name? 
Daniel. So Daniel, you were asking about what if I want to remove a particular element from the array, right? If I have an array and I want to remove Mary or Donald, right? From the array, not the first, not the last, just one in the middle. For that, I would suggest to use ChatGPT because honestly, nobody, <laughs> nobody knows how to use that. But the word, the function that we want to use is slice. So array slice. Now slice, I will have to check the parameters of slice. There you have it. And so array. So two from two. So, oh wait, slice will give me a slice of the array. Splice is the one that I, it will remove us and a slice of the array. So these two, slice and splice, you see, changes the content by removing or replacing existing elements. So splice is the thing that you want. So what are the parameters? Start, delete counts. So if I want to, if I want to delete Mary, it will be star will be one and count will be one, and that will give me. Wait, what is splice returning? A new array. A new array. Okay, so. So remove will be the same array, but Mary. Oh, splice, not slice, sorry. <laughs> splice. If, if you do slice, it will be an array with just Mary in it. I have a question. Yes? That first one, is just to choose the whole thing instead of choosing the whole array? No, one is for choosing where I'm starting to splice. Oh, okay. And then the second one is how many of them I want to remove. If, it. If I want Zero one, yeah, and you're removing the first one. But if you want to remove John and Mary, it will be zero two. Because okay. you're starting at zero and then you're removing two. All right. Make sense? Yeah. That's a splice. Oh, yeah, I, believe you can I mean, I don't know, I never use it. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, never use it. That's the type of function that, yeah, are dead in the language, but the application in real life uh, exercises is like very uncommon. Like, and the other thing is that because it's uncommon and the parameters are a little bit tricky, then it, people tend to avoid it, right? If you have a function that behaves like it's not clear how, you, how to use it, I mean, it's clear because it's documented, right? But not everybody reads the documentation, not everybody knows how to use it. So it's kind of hard to apply in a real life uh, scenario. And the other thing is that you usually don't take out things from an array like that. That doesn't work. That's, that's not usually the way we do things. So we try to avoid those type of things, right? So yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what it is. Okay, let me stop there.